Duncan, the narrow gauge engine, pulls passenger coaches. He takes people to work every morning and brings them home from work again in the evening. Oh, at last. Oh, dear. Oh. Hello, Duncan. How are you? How am I? I'll tell you how I am. I've got an awfully wobbly wheel. Maybe you should go to the steamworks. Oh, hi. I already did. But Victor told me there was nothing wrong with it. Typical. Have you seen the track at Crossney Curran? No. Why? What's happening there? Don't ask the thin controller, because he says nothing. But every time I pass through, my rivets rattle and my funnel shakes. And now look at my wobbly wheel. But... And to top it all, I've this one passenger who's always grumbling and complaining. He's even had the cheek to say I'm not doing my job properly. Well, you are running a bit late, Duncan. Oh, don't you start. One morning, Diesel was shunting some troublesome trucks in the yard. <laughs> now get in line, you silly trucks, and stay still. Edward had delivered trucks of milk, butter and cheese for Hero to collect. Right, now it's your turn. Stop biffing the trucks, Diesel. You're spilling the milk. It's the only way to get these troublesome trucks to do what you want, Edward. <laughs> so mind your own business. Oh. A little later, Hero arrived. Good morning, Diesel. Good morning, trucks. <laughs> oh, Hero, don't be such a Mr. Nice engine. These trucks are nothing but troublesome, and you need to show them who's boss. <laughs> no, Diesel. These trucks are no trouble. I am master of the railway. Hero collected the trucks and puffed away. And these are our two fire engines, Bell and Flynn. Oh, I see. Mm hmm. Bell has had water cannons fitted to her boiler for firefighting, as you have already seen demonstrated, Bell. Uh, sorry, sir. Yes. Very impressive. Hmm. Flynn, on the other hand, has a special water tank for his hoses and water cannons. And he is able to run on both rail and road. Right. This is how I switch from rail wheels to road wheels. Well done. Very useful. Hmm. But tell me, Sir Topham Had, do you really need two fire engines? Wouldn't one be enough? One fire engine would do for a very small island, but two fire engines are much safer than one. I see. Fair point. Hmm. Aha! The real thing! The alarm has sounded! There's a fire in some sheds near Wellsworth. You must go! Most of the engines don't take James's stories too seriously. But Percy found the stories very scary. Especially because Percy often pulled the mail train at night. Sometimes at night, things look scarier than they really are. <laughs> And that's when I saw the ghost train. <gasps> James, Percy doesn't like your stories. Well, it's not my fault if Percy's not as brave as I am. If you're so brave, why don't you go out at night and pull the mail train? Uh, pulling the mail train is a job for a small engine like Percy, not a splendid tender engine like me. It's OK, Thomas. I don't mind pulling the mail train. 
If you're really not afraid, James, perhaps you'd like to prove it tonight by pulling the flying kipper for me. All right, Henry. I shall. I'm not afraid of a few fish. We'll see, James. We'll see. Look at this mess. What is going on here? I'm working as fast as I can, sir. Yes, I can see that. But maybe you could do with some help. Help? I don't need help. I'll soon have this all cleared up. Oops. Uh, oh. That's it, Cranky. Oh. I'm getting another crane to come and help you clean up this dockside. Another crane? But I don't need any help. <laughs> help be on the way, me hearty. And not a moment too soon. Oh, oh, watch yourself. <laughs> so the fat controller went to the steamworks. Hello, Victor. I want to know if you can spare Kevin for the day. Yes, sir. As you can see, we are particularly quiet. Kevin! Coming! <laughs> you call, boss? Ah, Kevin. I have a special job for you. A special? For me? Wow! I've never heard of a crane being given a special before. Something terrible must have happened. All the diesels have disappeared. I have to find them. <laughs> I think we've taken this joke a little too far. Yeah. What he means is, Paxton was really worried. <laughs> Don't be such fussy buffers. It was a joke, that's all. And jokes are really funny. Paxton didn't think it was a joke at all. <sighs> Hello? Any diesels here? I'm a diesel. But Paxton didn't hear Rusty because he was already hurrying away. Have you seen any diesels, Thomas? Um, I can see you. Not me. The other diesels. They've disappeared. <laughs> Where's Salty? Is he missing too? Something is making all the diesels disappear. Stop, please! But the trucks were going too fast to stop now. No! Come back! Come back! <laughs> the entrance to the old mine had only recently been ah. reboarded up. Even that couldn't stop them. Percy slowed down when he saw the dark tunnel ahead. Hello? Anybody there? Percy knew that he should go in and bring back the trucks, but he didn't like the look of the mine. <gasps> Percy was scared. He didn't know what to do. He just had to stop and think for a moment. But of course, what he thought of was... <gasps> Gator. Being brave is not the same as not feeling scared. Being brave is about what you do, even when you do feel scared. Percy remembered what Gator had said to him, and he knew he could do it. He could be brave. It was cold and snowy on the island of Sodor as Christmas drew near. At this time of year, Percy was always very busy. There were Christmas trees to deliver. And the extra Christmas post also had all his regular jobs, such as... 
taking Scrap to the scrapyard. It wasn't quite as special as carrying Christmas trees or delivering mail, but it was still very important. Hello, Reg. Oh, hello, Percy. Brought me some lovely scrap, have you? I certainly have. Aren't I the lucky one, then? Sorting scrap into different types is not everyone's idea of fun, but Reg loves his work. Percy wondered if maybe he was an unlucky engine. At Marin Station, the fat controller had some strong words for Bill and Ben. Your careless work this morning has caused confusion and delay. To make sure no more crates fall off your trucks, one of you is going to have to push from the back. You can be the back engine, Ben. It was your careless driving that caused the crates to bounce off. What? No way! I'm not going at the back. <clears throat> OK. At last, Percy arrived at Ulfstead Castle to deliver the mail. He mentioned his bad luck to Stephen. Bad luck? You've still got your four wheels and a full set of pistons. You should count yourself a very lucky engine. I know, but today I... You know, a lot of engines used to worry about being unlucky. Some would carry a lucky charm to bring them good luck. <laughs> I still have my lucky horseshoe. I could do with some good luck today. I tell you what, why don't I give you my lucky horseshoe? Thank you, Stephen. Thank you so much. It was a misty day on the island of Sodor. At Brendam Docks, Cranky was unloading a big shipment of building supplies. What's that noise? Ah! <laughs> That'll be the flatbeds of fear, Thomas. The flatbeds of fear? What are they? Well now, me hearty. Long, long ago, an old engine was puffing along the tracks, pulling three flatbeds, when suddenly his coupling snapped. Ah! And the flatbeds rolled away. Now the flatbeds roll the rails, a whistling and a wailing, and looking for an engine to couple up to. <laughs> so, me hearty, beware the flatbeds of fear. They might come rolling after you. <laughs> Enough of your tall tale, Salty. <laughs> Thomas has work to do. Off you go, Thomas. Now, Scruff didn't mind looking scruffy, but some of the other engines couldn't understand how he could bear it. Dear, oh dear, such a messy engine. Oh, I'd hate to be that dirty. If I looked that scruffy, I'd stay in my shed. It doesn't bother me. I'm happy just the way I am. <whistles> right, let's get you trucks back to the waste dump. And get scratching! At Knapford Station, Scruff saw the fat controller and stopped to say good morning. Good morning, sir. Oh, my! Scruff, your paint is peeling and you're starting to rust. Maybe I could just have the rust scraped off, sir. Oh, no, 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 that won't do at all. There's only one way to get rid of rust. You'll need to be repainted. Repainted? Scruff was horrified. He didn't even like being washed. And he was sure he wouldn't like being repainted. Listen to Thomas and Percy. If only I had a chuff or a puff. Stafford's flatbeds of timber were soon ready. What's the matter, Stafford? You look sad. I know I'm just an electric engine, Thomas, 
but I want to chuff and puff like a steamy. Maybe we could help you. Could you? Of course, Stafford. We'll teach you to chuff and puff. Just follow us and you'll sound like a steamy in no time. <laughs> So Stafford raced along with Thomas and Percy. Listen to my chuff, Stafford. Now you try. Chuff, 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 chuff. That's good. Now, listen to Percy puffing. Now, try and puff, Stafford. Puff, 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 puff. Well done, Stafford. You sound just like a steamy. Thanks, Thomas. Thanks, Percy. So Stafford went to the docks. Welcome, everybody. Please make your way through to the exhibition center. Mind your step now. Then the fat controller arrived in Winston. Hello, Sir Topham. Glad you could make it. Glad to help out, Sir Robert. What do you want me to do? Well. I was hoping that you could dress up as Santa Claus for the last day of the fair. Uh, yes, of course. I filled in for the real Santa Claus before. <clears throat> ho, ho, ho! <laughs> <laughs> Super! And I'm planning to get you an old-fashioned sleigh. Uh, a sleigh? But... <clears throat> I've never driven a sleigh before. Why can't I just arrive in Winston? I'm very good at driving him. Aren't I, Winston? Yes, sir. Of course you are, sir. Driving a sleigh isn't difficult, honestly. There's nothing to worry about. Goodbye, Sir Topham. But the fat controller was worried. So the Fat Controller took Winston to the Steamworks to see if they could make him look like a sleigh. Paxton was in the shunting yard picking up some trucks when Toby arrived. Morning, Toby. How are you? You'll never guess what happened. Thomas backed into me at the water tower. <laughs> he got soaked. I'm afraid poor Thomas has lost his puff. Lost his puff? Oh, no. That sounds serious. Paxton felt terrible. Thomas, I'm so sorry. I made you be silly and lose your puff. But... Don't worry. I'll find it for you. Stay here. I'll be back just as soon as I can. But, Paxton? What are you talking about? Lost puff. Lost puff. What does a lost puff even look like? Aha! Uh -huh. There it is! Paxton thought he'd found Thomas's lost puff. But it turned out to be Gordon, building up a good head of steam as he pulled the express. Paxton did feel silly. That wasn't Thomas's puff. Connor was on the mainland, collecting passengers for Sodor. But there were too many people, and his coaches were full. Oh, no! The train's going without us! Don't worry, little boy. I'll be back. I promise. <whistles> There's still one more train before Christmas! <whistles> It was already late by the time Connor reached Knapford Station. Sir, if I can get some more coaches, then I can make one more run to the mainland and back, and everyone will be home for Christmas. You'll have to be quick, Connor. More heavy snow is on the way. Don't you worry, sir. I'm a very fast engine. 
Charlie the playful purple engine is always laughing and joking with whoever is there to listen. Hey, Salty, why are pirates called pirates? Ah, uh, oh, I need to know, Charlie. Why are pirates called pirates? Because they are! <laughs> <laughs> oh, good one, Charlie. <laughs> Not everybody likes Charlie's jokes. But sometimes they just can't help laughing anyway. <laughs> mm. I've had enough of your jokes for one day, Charlie. Oh, oh, you haven't heard the one about the bar! Not now, Charlie. Hey, Thomas. What's pink and grey, and that's four feet? Uh, I don't know, Charlie. What is pink and grey and has four feet? An elephant with its tongue sticking out. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that tickles me. Oh, good one, Charlie. Hey, Percy, Charlie's got a joke about an elephant. Oh, I've got lots of jokes. Bill and Van are tank engine twins. They look very alike. Very alike indeed. <laughs> Morning, Ben! <laughs> Morning, Bill! That's why they have nameplates on their sides, to show which one is Bill and which one is Ben. Bill and Ben like looking alike, because that means they can play tricks on the other engines. One day, Bill and Ben were making their way along the main line. When a very fast engine came across the junction in front of them and gave them a big surprise. Who was that, Bill? I don't know, Ben. Thomas, did you see that very fast engine that just went past? You mean Connor. He's one of the new streamlined engines, bringing passengers from the mainland. He must be very full of himself, racing about like that and surprising other engines. Connor's not full of himself. He's a very friendly engine. Thomas and his friends were making their way back to Tidmouth Sheds. But when they got there, they discovered that the turntable was stuck. It was frozen and it wouldn't turn. The turntable only pointed to one berth, so only one engine could go into the shed. I should sleep in the shed. It wouldn't be right for me to sleep out in the snow. I don't want to sleep out in the snow either, Gordon. Snow and ice are not kind to my paintwork. What about Percy? He has to pull the mail train tonight. He'll need a berth to come back to. I don't mind, Thomas. I can find another shed to sleep in. No, Percy. You should sleep here. We can all find other sheds to sleep in, and we should. The engines all agreed that Percy would sleep at the sheds that night. And the rest of the steamies went to find other sheds to sleep in. They met Flynn coming back from fighting a fire. Where are you all off to at this time of night? The turntable is frozen at Tidmouth Sheds. We're all looking for somewhere else to sleep. Good morning, Thomas. Good morning, Gator. Thomas nearly popped a piston when he realised who he'd seen. Gator? Yes, it's me. Just delivering some rock salt to the quarry. Does Percy know you're back? No, not yet. But please be sure to tell him when you see him. I will. See you later, Gator. Bust my buffers. Gator's back. Wait till Percy hears the news. Thomas raced into the shunting yard and found Percy working hard, keeping the trucks in order. Look out, Thomas. What's the rush? Percy, you'll never guess who's back on Sodor in time for Christmas. Who? <gasps> Is it Santa Claus? Gator! Gator? Really? My old friend? Yes! This'll be the best Christmas ever. Well, um, 
Where is he then? Oh, he had to make a delivery to the quarry. Thanks, Thomas. Maybe I'll make a delivery to the quarry too. But you don't have any trucks. What are you going to deliver? Me. <laughs> Millie, the narrow-gauge engine, loves her job at Ulfstead Castle. She loves being a really useful engine and doing whatever needs to be done on the estate. Running errands for the groundskeeper and showing visitors around the castle grounds. Luke is also a narrow-gauge engine and he loves his job at the Blue Mountain Quarry. He feels right at home in the noise and the dust. He loves collecting crushed stone and carrying boulders. He really loves whooshing through the dark tunnels and bursting out the other side. One day, Luke was given a job that took him out of the quarry to Ulstead Castle. Hello there. Hello. My name's Luke. I've come with the stone for the castle. Great. Well, I'm the Earl and this is Millie. Bonjour. She'll show you where to take the stone. What now? I'm sorry, Caitlin, but Vickerstown Bridge is closed for maintenance. It won't open again until morning. You must take your passengers back to the station. You will all have to spend the night on the island. Some of the passengers were very disappointed. But Caitlin liked the idea of spending the night on the island of Sodor. Oh, sir! I've never spent a night on Sodor before. Can I sleep at Tidmouth Sheds? Uh, well, I suppose that would be all right. <laughs> Calm down, Caitlin. I don't know what people get up to on the mainland at this time of night, but on the island of Sodor, people like to get their sleep. Sorry, sir. Now, take your passengers back to Kelsthorpe Station calmly and quietly. You must consider others. <laughs> Caitlin tried to be calm and quiet as her passengers disembarked. But by the time Caitlin was ready to leave, she was far too excited to remember what the Fat Controller had said to her. Henry and Hero picked up their very heavy load from Farquhar Quarry. Then they hurried to the docks where they were needed right away. But as they made their way across the island, the steam from Hero's funnel began to look very dirty. Hero! Hero! There's dark smoke coming from your funnel! And from yours, Henry. I wonder what's wrong. Just then, Duck rolled past, pulling some empty coal trucks. Oh, dear. Looks like you two got some of the bad coal that arrived today. Bad coal? I've been sent to get some fresh coal to replace it. Maybe we should wait until the fresh coal is ready. No, Henry. We can still run on this coal. We still have steam. We have to keep on puffing, Henry. We need to be really useful engines. Henry wanted to be a really useful engine, but he was very worried about the bad coal. I'm sorry, Hero, but I'm going to go back to the sheds until the good clean coal gets here. So Henry left Hero with all the trucks. <laughs> <laughs>